Like how to treat a woman, take care of your kids, gotta take responsibility for what you did. I do it to inspire, take your mind a little higher, like her name on a degree, not her name on a flyer. Yeah, boss moves, we just doing what a boss do, we all now and we off you, it's true. The TK Kirkland Show. Everybody around the world, from Japan to the streets of Oakland, California, to Compton, to Jersey City, New Jersey. The money making Manhattan to Chi Town to the world famous Detroit. I want y'all to meet Curtis Daniels, the flyest, one of the coldest owners of one of the greatest studios in the world, Patchwork Studio. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Curtis Daniels is on the show. So Kurt, I was calling you mm-hmm. because I like that you took the time out to tell me that that new album I'm dropping is about to be fine on the air. Oh yeah, man. That, uh, I laughed. Sure, people on the freeway was looking at me funny, man. I was, uh, <laughs> I was laughing myself. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and it was, it was you know, like I said. I'm just being honest. I made it to about the first 20 minutes. I got interrupted by a phone call, and I was like, "Who the hell is calling me now?" Because I wanted to kind of finish listening to the album. So right. I think right. I think people people gonna enjoy it. It's dope. Yeah, it's really different, and, you know, I've been taking all the stuff that I thought about in the 90s when we first hooked up, in 94 when we started this project, and it's just not it's just not a, um, a comedy album. It's a hip-hop comedy album, and I like that. Yeah, man, I mean, I was, you know what, it's funny. I was sitting there thinking, and I was like, because, I, I mean, I know the process, and you didn't change anything from the, original recording and i was like man it, they always talk about music being good when it's timeless but i was like shit tk doing kind of timeless music comedy because the little stuff that you were saying except for maybe like some of the song reference with tony braxton that you know people still know who it is but right. it literally it literally was it, it was on point that's why i was like, laughing and i said i said you know i said i hope orange juice jones still look good because He's going to have to come out and perform at some point, you know what I mean? TK's going to have to dust him off. He's going to have to put on his trench coat and come on back out. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm I'm just real excited, Kurt, for so many reasons, right? The show, Perseverance, Never Giving Up, and everything fell into order to make this happen. And it's really not just for me. When I think about it, it's about artists out there who have a vision and a dream that right now, fellas, if people are listening, you don't really need a record label. See, because remember I told you I was going to sign with, um, um, what's the priority? And I really thought that was going to be the move. And I realized they wasn't doing anything more than what I can do. Like they wasn't paying for the video. Yeah. I'm paying for the video. I got, oh, I got radio on lock on my own, around the world. Right. Yeah, when you told me that, I was wondering. I mean, it's kind of like the analogy. It's it's just distribution. So it's kind of like, you know, people can get you on the shelf at Walmart, but are they going to spend any money to tell people that your product is on aisle three and shelf four? And, you know, getting in the store ain't nothing, because if you get in the store and your product don't move, then they're going to take it out the store. So back in the days, yeah, it used to be hard to get, the stuff distributed, but now there aren't any physicals. So unless somebody's doing some marketing or promoting, you know, if they just don't deliver your product, we can do that for twenty five dollars, man. <laughs> right. Yep. So that's that's what I mean. And I'm just I'm just really excited. But we was also now, talking about I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I wanna say one more thing too that I picked up on the album that I thought was dope. Okay. Is that I mean I'm assuming you recorded the, the comedy part live and it sounded good because I always can tell a fake laugh track. And right, so I was like, right. okay, because, you know, you kept saying, I got this other audio. It was my first time hearing it. 
when I went through it, I was like, shit, TK did good because he got a real he got a real crowd laughing at his jokes and he interacted and stuff like that. So it don't sound overproduced. So I wanted to tell you that as well. And I, uh, I, I got to the, yeah, I ain't going to spoil no jokes, but I got to the part where he was talking about the dude feet don't reach the ground off the stool and I about fell out, the, drove out my lane laughing. <laughs> that's just, and that's just the play <laughs> in you, you know, because what's going to happen with the controversial song, you know what I'm talking about. Right. The controversy was the free version of that song. The, contro- the, the controversy is, you know what ne- was never discussed? A man and his feelings getting hurt. So I'm going to take that song and really spin it and bring attention to men. What women in society never understand is how men get their feelings hurt too and want to become violent, want to become evil, and angry, and I want to bring that and bring people, um, I'll make people aware of that men are not superheroes, that they're as fragile as well as some of these women, and, and it's not to be feminine, it's just that from doing the podcast, yo, Kirk, I've been getting over 20, 30 shows I've done that I haven't aired yet mm-hmm. with these men losing their mind about their women. Right. About catch, catching a girl on video, having given head to another man. One dude hit me. He caught the bitch um, um, sucking on the dick on his Apple Watch. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the line says sensitive thugs, they all need hugs, man. So, you know, yeah, it's, some, it's a lot of sensitive people out there. Yeah, so it's just going to bring attention to make people aware and also teach men about karma because even though they hurt, What's the what's, what's been most said the most? They all have said, "Yo, I did my dirt." And I think women do come into relationship wanting to be sincere, but when the man has cheated on them, it gives them a reason to start cheating on them. Yeah, I can agree with that. You know, I can agree with that. A, yeah, yeah, most of the most most of the women want security and trust, man. So one of those. It's like having two legs. If one of the legs fall out, it's unbalanced, so it don't work. You know what I mean? I and, if they, and, and if they think, and if they think they got to put a two by four underneath the table, they're gonna put one there because that leg ain't strong. So you right. can't be mad about that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be mad at it, my man. So I also wanted to talk to you about the um, what do you expect out of artists and what they're lacking when they come in the studio? So we could give an insight since you've been doing this since the beginning of time and making shit happen. Young um, artists of any spoken word, rappers, R and B singers, to truly respect the grind. So, what would you explain to them how to come in and do their thing? Well, the, the studio, you know, it's like we, we say if you take the long term, it's the recording studio, uh, okay. or your or your mixing in the studio, or your mastering. So, the idea is that you want to come prepared. Um, typically, you know, at least for us, we, we got engineers that's ready to go that they feel like the days are longer when, when they ain't really doing nothing, wasting time. So we about getting ready to go. Um, coming in the studio, just be prepared. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to necessarily be creating in the studio. You want to be recording or mixing. Um, I think we, we think we on this conversation because I, I complimented you when we was working on your album and I was like, Man, it was a it's a pleasure to work with people and artists like you who who actually have an opinion and know what they want. Um, right. Some of the some of the issues that we run into, it's, it's almost like when you were just saying about when these men are sensitive and they resort to violence because they don't have the tools to express themselves. It yeah. happens like that. It happens like that with the music where you get these artists who don't even know instruments that are used in their songs, and they can't. You're kidding me. Yeah, they can't express what they want changed. So they may hear uh, ukulele in their song and don't know what that sound is. Well, how do you tell your engineer to lower the ukulele when you don't know what it is or you don't know what a bass line is or you don't know what a snare or a shaker? So it's like it gets a little bit hard to communicate when you're working when the person can't tell you what they want. And then they get frustrated because they, they either drinking or smoking or doing something and it just makes it hard. So then what ends up happening is sometimes because they embarrass that they can't commit, com- I mean, communicate, 
they just shut down and then they walk out of the studio with something they may not be happy with. And then we sitting there like, well, what's wrong with it? We, the engineer sat with you and worked with you until you was happy. But a lot of times they just get so frustrated because they can't communicate that they kind of give up on it. So you, wow. know, you just, you just kind of want to come with the vision. We, we, our job, you know, on the, as, as a studio on the technical side and the engineers, our job, what we say is to get what the artist and the producer has in their mind to take. So as long right. as you can, as long as you can communicate what you want, we can do it. So like you come in there and say, Kirk, do y'all got thunder sound? Yeah. Do you got a car sound? Do you got a door closer yeah. sound? Can you make right. this happen? Can you speed me up? Can you slow me down? Right. Yeah. We love that, TK. We just hate to sit in the back of the room and don't say shit. And then at the end of the session, they ain't happy. And and we like, well, why you just didn't say nothing about it? So, you know, like I said to you, the Mariah Carey's, the Monica's, the Alicia Keys, the people that have writers that are real picky, I love yeah. working with them because they want stuff to be so right that they're going to tell you ahead of time what they want. All you got to do is do what they want, and it, and it's gonna right. be easy. Yeah, we can't we can't read minds. We good, right. but we can't we can't read minds. Yeah, because I, I thought that was a a, a a huge compliment you gave to me. Because I honestly, for me, learning from back in the studio with Dr. Dre, Teddy Riley, AMG, um, DJ Quick and them niggas, like I didn't really know I was really paying attention like that. So when I came in the studio. It was just like you could, you saw it. It was natural yeah. for me. Yeah, but see, your thing is the first thing you said. You came in the studio. They just don't even want to come in the studio now. They'll they'll be like, I want you to mix my record, and won't show up to the mix session. You they'll be like, be fucking kidding me. Ah, that's what I'm saying. You in there trying to go to mastering. You want to hear the edits. You want to hear the rough mixes. You want to do this. You try, and then you got to think. I mean, you probably recalled your record, and because people don't know what that means, we mix it. TK wouldn't listen to it. He heard some stuff. He thought they could make it better, so we had to recall it and make changes. Your whole I, your whole attitude towards the project was, shit, I don't care what it costs. I just want to make it right. And other Damn people right. is like, hey, I'd rather spend $600 on this belt, but I only want to spend $100 on studio time. And then the music, which is affording you the lifestyle to be able to buy the belt, kind of sucks. So, you know, I think you kind of thought you was bothering us. But yeah, we was, we yeah we was happy. Like we, I'll tell you one record. Uh, we did a Maybach music record with Rick Ross, the one that had Erica Badu, and I think we did. Yeah. I think I don't want to exaggerate. I think we did 19 recalls on that record. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so your process was cool. You know, uh, we enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. We need and we we need we need you to executive produce a rapper, so you can run their stuff and tell them how to do it. <laughs> yep, I would love to do that. You know, and that's a, and believe it or not, when I start doing the interviews um, towards the end of the year, that's what I'm pitching for me and YZ to start producing albums because I think that we have a, um, a niche there, especially with the um, – and I'm not bragging. I just really felt, now that you called me, I know that when the people hear this, when it comes out, they're going to be fucking impressed. Yeah, and I, I think that even if you don't do rappers, I think that, like, it's a whole bunch of comedians and, and comedy people that, I mean, you, you kind of created a new piece of content. I don't know what exactly. category I don't know what category you're going to put it in, but I think that, you know, just looking at the space, there's nothing out there like it right now. Right. Uh, maybe, maybe it was done, you know, my mom and them used to have Red Fox albums and Richard Pryor and stuff like that, but yours is combining – Music, real talent, live performance, comedy, and all that stuff is different. So it's just going to be interesting to see that, like, if I'm looking at a whiteboard right now, it's only one dot in that space. So right. in a year, if I see seven or eight dots in there, the credit should go to you. You know, people don't give people credit or they don't say That's what right. they were inspired by. But right, right. now, there's, not, there's nothing in that space. So when you throw it out there... It ain't a lot of people that that's creators and can't create new stuff. They just copy stuff that they see. So it'll be interesting to try to see who kind of bites what you're doing. <laughs> yep. I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, so, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now my other person, how long uh, you've been running Patchwork and been part owners of that? We've been, I've been running the studio since 95, so 23 years. 
Um, and uh, I think like nine years ago, me and the guy that owns it now, Mike, bought it from Bob. But I've been running it since day one. Right. And, right. and um, you know, we started our very first client without making nothing up, was Outcast, and then we did Goody Mob, Society of Soul, TLC, and all the way up through, you know, Young Dolph was there yesterday, and uh-huh. Jay Z, uh, whoever you can think of, man, uh, from Jonas Brothers to Sting to Annie Lennox to Beyonce to Missy to Sierra to Monica to Patti LaBelle to Whitney to whoever you can think of, we had an opportunity to work with. Man, now what made you get into this? Because I know you got a Long Beach, right? Nope, I'm from Carson, right next Where's to Long Carson? Beach. Yeah, Carson. Oh, so man. I'm from I'm from a, I'm from a from a neighborhood called the Patch. That's why it's called Patchwork. We put in there work for the Patch. They bloods oh. in my neighborhood. So that's where the name comes from. But now one of our friends, uh, uh, Razcast, was uh, from, he's from the patch as well. And right. I just thought, I thought he was the best rapper on earth. And one of my other homeboys, Bob Whitfield, got drafted when he was like, I think, 19. It was the highest paid lineman in NFL history. So he had a bunch of money. And right. basically I kind of convinced him to send it to Raz so Raz can cut a demo. We thought we was going to get a deal. Nobody signed him, so it forced us to start our own label. And then, he, right. and then ironically, he ended up signing the priority in Capital. And then uh, when we did the first album, we looked at how much money we spent over $260,000 in the recording studio, and we was like, man, we should just start our own studio. And that's kind right. of like how, that's how we got started in it, yeah. Yeah, that's insane, man. That's insane. Yeah, I've been there. So why? And, and, and now, now, real quick, the other thing too that I know you you wanted to touch on was that it was enlightening to you was all the we had, we we do we offer we picked up the space where the labels kind of dropped off, so we offer some admin services that help people like you own their records. So we right. do copyright. We get these things called ISRC codes. It stands for International Standard Recording Codes and UPC codes. That's how people track songs. They don't read song titles. We do the digital distribution, we do sound exchange, and we monetize YouTube. So those are the other things that, by us having a mastering engineer in house, that we can do for you know for our people that we was ignorant to. We didn't know we didn't know about right. the codes, man. Yeah, the, the other people right. was get, getting their records coded and making all the money, and we was getting robbed. Yeah, say the white motherfuckers was doing it. We keep it real on this shit. Yeah, the labels, the labels. Well, the labels was doing it. So, like, it, here's what I tell people if you want to kind of see how it happens. Imagine there's a record that's in the street that's buzzing. So, say for sake of what we're doing, So Icy with Gucci and Jeezy is buzzing in the street. It's just right. a hot record. Then you end up seeing the song got re, uh, you, you see the song got re, redistributed. So, the label will be like, we like this record. We want you to come in and re-record it and remix it and remaster it. And then they're going to issue out a new copy. The reason why they want it remixed and remastered is because they want to put Bay codes on the song. So then they tell all the radio stations, hey, we're not playing that old copy no more. Make sure you play this one. And that's how they get ownership. So just like you keep seeing new Elvis albums come out, and it'll say digitally remastered. When they, right. rem- when they remastering, the ownership is probably changing. So it's a new person who owns that master that they're doing. And so, like, I'll tell this one story, which is I told Tion congratulations, you did the most gangster shit that I done heard of this year. So TLC, right. TLC, what they did with their first album is they went in and re-recorded it and remixed it and remastered it. So now if you're doing a movie and you want to use Waterfalls, you can try to go to the record label and get robbed and use that version, or you can just call T on them and use the one that they redid and it sounds just the same. And that's why I was like, some of these artists don't know the game. Like if I was say, Tip or Jeezy, and I'm celebrating my 10-year anniversary of my first album, shit, I, yeah. would just go, I would just go re-record it. And then now the money go to you. It don't go to the label. It's, the label owns a master. You can make a right. new master. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy, yo. That means a lot of artists have been getting robbed for years. Yeah, 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 man. It's kind of like, man, the people that's paying you own the bank and they doing the accounting. You ain't never going to get all your money out of that situation. <laughs> right. So the artists, so the, to the people listening, do you hear what he's saying? You, it, it's a, We live in an era now. You can be your own fucking boss. The right. money can come directly to you. You don't need a fucking 
a record label. Now, let, let me say this, TK. Now, what, okay. I, what I will say is that the benefit of a record label is you got marketing and you got promotional dollars. So now, right, yeah, you, you can, you, yeah, you can create and distribute, but if you don't have the money to market and promote and whatever, because like I keep saying, we got first, we got the first two steps. We creating the product and now we distributing it. But remember, right. uh, uh, remember a, a, a record deal before was creating the album, P and D promotion and distribution. So now right. we we got the distribution part, but we don't have the P part. So it seems like if it was if I was giving advice, that's who you need to partner with, somebody that can do marketing and promotion. So now the record label was like, give me X amount percentage of your stuff because we're gonna pay for the recording, we're gonna pay right. for the production, we're gonna pay for all four things. Now if they're not paying for all four things, then you know, those items should come off during negotiation. So if I was going out looking for a strategic partner, I would look for a marketing and promotion company that's going to put a budget behind the project because right. you, yeah, you, TK paid for his own recording. He pays right. for his own mixing, his own mastering. He can pay us $25 for the distribution. Now he needs a partner to promote it and tell everybody that it's available. I mean, you can do it on your network, but if, Somebody got some dollars and they can spread it out everywhere else, and it's gonna help it a little bit more. So I just think that if people are looking for something, they need to start looking at some of these marketing companies. And these marketing companies is looking for artists because they need music to market their products. You know what I mean? Right. Now, who, you, do, now, do you know any names of marketing companies that we can put out there? I don't. I mean, I never did that homework because I ain't an artist. Okay. But I was, I was like, if I was an artist. That's what I would be looking for because that's the only, like, if you looked at the whole totality of the process, it's creating right. the project, recording it, mixing it, mastering it, doing all the admin purpose work, doing the distribution. Now, once it's everywhere, somebody got to go to, you got to make it known that your project is everywhere, and that's just marketing and promotion. So it's right. like if you can get with a partner and just be like, look, man, if you can make a budget for me to market and promote my stuff, I'll give you a percentage of the sales. Now you you own a hundred percent of stuff as opposed to the label, so you can just right. cut a deal with them. If you own a hundred percent of everything like you do, then you can right. say, "Hey man, won't you create a marketing and and promotion budget, and then I'll cut you in twenty percent on the sales and all my shows or whatever you want to right, do." Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, what I would do. Because what I got going for me now is that um, we start in London. I got every radio station in America who I got a relationship with who's heard this already. Is ready. They wanted to drop it, like, yesterday. Like, when I was in Miami, Rick Carter, who's not on the air, no, he's going somewhere else. He said, I played it for him a couple months ago. He said, TK, can I play this now? He wanted to play it on the radio that day. Right. That's how beautiful. Yep. That day. Yeah. So, well, like, TK, I like, if I, was, if, I, if, if I was you or an artist, you know who got the money? That, can, that need an artist or whatever, them prepaid credit cards, man. They want your audience. You know what I mean? Mm, and they got right. a whole, bu- they got a whole bunch of money, man. You just tell them to give you a, a penny off of every transaction, and you got a big marketing budget. But if somebody like, and then I know like Split Small Liquor Bull been having problems. They got people that act like they don't want their product or the association with it, so they got a gang of money that they look in the brand with people. And I'm like, man, y'all can put some Split Small Liquor Bull in my studio, but for somebody doing urban or whatever, those are the type of people that you need to uh, reach out to. I mean, Red Bull is capped out. Everybody hit them up. You know what I mean? The Slit Smart right. Bull, man, they got some money. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. And um, the pre break credit card. So we'll talk about that when we get up the air. Because, like, right on the air right now, I'm going to let you handle that deal if you don't mind. You'll be the agent on it. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. You know, because I, I really got it on lock already. But I really want to take it to another level because I'm not going to let the audience know, when this song comes out, I did um, a similar thing what Jay-Z did with OJ, the video. Oh, you did? Oh, homie. The whole first video is animated. Okay. Yeah, and then I got a, a triple X version of walking in the street version, right? So right. now 
I'm going to be looking, and the people who listen to this thing, I'm looking for a social media girl in her 30s that got a huge following that we could cast for the role of the street version of Walking in the Rain. That's going to be dope. That's going to be dope. Because this, this that video is going to be social media driven in YouTube. Yeah, I, I think you're going to do well just by the fact of how long you've been planning. Because, I mean, you called me about four months before you came out. And you, you got to, you, you, I'm, I'm just saying, man, we don't get we don't get people that do that. And you was like, look, man, I'm coming on tour in Atlanta. I'm going to be there in February. This is probably like October, November. And I'm like, TK just talking. He called me. Right. He, nigga, I'm coming. I'm like, oh, I really better put this on the schedule because this nigga coming. Right. And uh, you know coming, what I mean? But, uh, but, but I'm saying it's just mentally to see how you kind of got it planned and mapped out in your mind. It just yeah. be, it'll just be interesting to see what happened if you actually get an opportunity to execute all your thoughts, you know? Right. So I, I just want to see it happen because I kind of know what you're thinking. I just want to see how it play out and how the response is. And then the other thing, I just want to see if they, if people are going to give you the credit for it. Thank you. Know you. What I mean? yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And like you said, and, what, and what's interesting when people hear it, they think I did it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, good comedy and good music is timeless. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, it is absolutely your 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 of, sub your subject matter seems to be timeless. <laughs> right. Yep. You hit it right on the nail, and it, and, and it truly is about definitely the subject matter. You know, right. so that's pretty much it, Kurt. You know, I wanted to um to, to to bring you into the forefront of this in this in this podcast and let the world know how all some of the greatest uh, artists have come through Patchwork Studios to the people listening. If you're in the Atlanta area, if you have your act together, you come in knowing the game, like know what you want to do and and really be dedicated to create hits. We have a black-owned studio that's been doing this for years that y'all probably just read the back of the the album cover back in the day, because now you don't really you just read the fine print. You don't really see it all the time. But there's a brother named Curtis Daniels that's really doing the things for Afro-Americans in, um, around the world. So when you come right. to Atlanta, let's go down to Patchwork Studio. So, Kurt, give them the phone number, um, your address, and the times to reach out that they can um, we call and and, 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 put, and book some studio time because I think they already like the studio. All right, so our our number is four zero four eight seven four nine eight eight zero. Our website is www dot patchwork and it's w e r k dot com. Um, you go on your app store. We got an app. It's just Patchwork Recording Studios. And then if you kind of want to know the nuts and bolts behind the music industry, we also have a podcast. It's called I Do Music. And basically, we interview people kind of like me behind the scenes. It's been working for 15 to 20 years. So if you right. need the information, you can just go on I Do Music. But our studio, we work, uh, we probably do about 11 sessions every day, seven days a week. We probably start at 9 a.m. and finish at 6 a.m. any morning. We keep a manager on staff seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can feel free to call up there anytime. All right, cool. Kurt, it's a pleasure, my man. And I'll call you this week because you're going to laugh. I want to book studio time in February for the next <laughs> album. 2020, right? No, uh, no, 2019. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, because I'm dropping the, the next album. I'm, I'm already preparing for it now. Um, um, why is these putting the music together? I'm getting everything ready. And the next album is called Play the Player, Pimp the Pimp. I can't wait, yo. There we go. All right, yeah, I'm dropping the, we'll uh, I'll be there 13 years in a row. I'm dropping the album every year for the next 13 uh, years. Okay. All right, cool. So we'll sure. talk. Thank yes, thank appreciate you, sir. It. Thank you for your time. And I uh, appreciate you giving these young kids knowledge. And to the world, um, around the world, you heard it here first on the TK Kirkland podcast. Make your pains be champagne. Peace to the motherfucking K. Go on, Kirk. This episode of the TK Kirkland Show was produced by Chris Thomas, executively produced by Charlemagne the God. This is an official Loudspeakers Network production. Speakers Network production. Speakers Network production. Speakers Network production.